Elden Ring is one of the most highly anticipated action RPGs of all time. The combination of the iconic, patience-testing combat of Dark Souls with the open-ended open world of something like Breath of the Wild were sure to make for an amazing game, if it was done correctly. And after a month-long delay, many gamers were afraid that the game may not be as polished as previous titles, and that the pandemic may have taken its toll on what could have been one of the best games of all time. Thankfully, I'm here to say that this is not the case. Elden Ring somehow has actually lived, and for me personally, surpassed the hype surrounding it. Spending nearly 60 hours on just my first playthrough, the game is absolutely huge and full of possibilities. And as with any game, once the initial playthroughs are finished, the speedrun routing gets underway. Every game has a unique set of challenges associated with it when it comes to routing the speedrun. Whether it's a high level of on-the-fly decision-making, or a large amount of mechanical skill, or simply determining what is actually required. It's a large community-driven puzzle, solving the ins and outs of every mechanic, area, and enemy to find out what is truly the fastest. This is by far my favorite part of any speedrun. It's an age of discovery that is super fun to be on the ground floor for. Each day is something new. Something new is discovered, and there is nearly a never-ending amount of things to be tested, timed, and theorized about. And with a game that is both open world and an action RPG, the possibilities are endless. In this video, I'm going to break down and show what the initial speedrun routing ideas were for Elden Ring and walk you through the process for discovering each new strategy and route. I won't be spoiling the final six bosses, so you can safely watch this video without worrying about being spoiled for the end game or any of the late game bosses. I will, however, be breaking down what is exactly needed to beat the game and what options you have for doing so. Sit back, relax, and get into a light load as I show you the endless possibilities of Elden Ring speedruns. The first and arguably most important thing you need to figure out when routing a speedrun is what is actually required to beat the game. Especially with an open world game, it isn't always clear what exactly is needed to beat it. It was originally thought that you had to go through the tutorial, touch some grass, get a girlfriend, then fight Margit. Go through the castle, then fight Godric. Once completed, most people headed over to Rinala's college, getting lost for 12 hours looking for a way inside. Then, they finally stumbled onto this dragon who's guarding the key. Once you get the key, you make your way inside and take this puppy to the pound. Remember to always adopt. Then, past the Indiana Jones section, you get into the Renala fight where she hides behind a bunch of flaming ankle biters. From there, it seems that you can progress into the second half of the game where the capital city resides, but you have to ride this Dectus lift to be able to do so. This lift requires two halves of the Dectus medallion. The first one is found on the opposite side of Limgrave at Fort Height. The other one is found even further away at Salid. Heading over to the lift itself, you make your way to the capital. Once at the capital, you run past these two tree sentinels and two other bosses, then fight the Draconic Knight. This allows you entrance into the capital city, where you can then just fight Ghost Godfrey and Morgoth. Morgoth's cousin, or something. I don't know, Soul's lore is weird. From there, your ass is maidenless, but she stops by to tell you that she wants to sacrifice herself for you so that you can light the fire that does, uh... Uh, that burns the tree or something, I think, I don't know. Anyways, we head up to the lift and into the Mountain of Giants where we fight the Fire Giant, who's got weak ankles. Then we capture the Dark Soul or whatever and get teleported to Chicago. Once there, we start a linear sequence of six bosses that I won't spoil. But it really is just a run to the end, beating the next six bosses until you get to the end of the game. This is how we thought it would initially go, but as it turns out, you only need to kill two demigods, and it can be any of the two demigods. There are seven possible demigods that you can kill to open the gate into Capital City. Godric at the castle, Renala at the college, Rikard in Mount Glamir, Radon in Salid, Orga in the capital, Melania in Alfena, and Mog in Sorifra River. Moog, Morgoth, and Melania are all locked behind the capital city and can't be accessed before then, so they're out of the picture. This leaves us with four options. Rikard, the boss in Mount Glamir. He has a special weapon that you use and does not scale with your level or any of your stats. This would allow you to do him at any part of the run, regardless of level or gear. He also drops 180,000 souls, enough for you to level like 40 times. The downside is, he's really far away. 
and you would have to use the Dectus Medallion to get up near the capital before fighting him. Also, the fight is pretty difficult. Some of his attacks are near impossible to dodge without lots of practice, especially this bullshit one. Radon is also an option, being similarly far away, being in Salid, but the game will not let you fight him until you reach the capital, starting the Festival of Radon. In the actual boss fight itself, he also is extremely difficult and requires high level to do good damage. He does have a lot of free summons to help with the fight, but you have to actually make it to the boss, and he does drop a large amount of souls, but not nearly as much as Rikard. Renala is relatively easy, and being on the way to the Dectus Lift, you save a lot of time on Traversal alone. This is counterbalanced with the fact that you have to collect the key by the dragon to enter the area. There's also a boss fight locking you out of fighting Renala herself. She's basically immune to all magic, so magic builds would want to avoid her, even though she gives a lot of souls. Lastly, there is Godric, who's right at the start of the game. Once you kill the tree sentinel to get your horse, you can head into the castle and then kill Margit and Godric. While these two bosses are on the way, as they're probably the ones you're supposed to fight first, they do give the least amount of souls. These are the four options for the boss fights, and you can fight any arrangement of two of them. Picking which two depends heavily on how fast you can kill each set of bosses and the travel time. Figuring this out requires a lot of testing into what weapons and builds are good, especially for late game. It was decided, once we knew what the requirements are, that the early game wasn't going to matter as much. After all, if you can't beat the game, it doesn't really matter how fast you get to the end. In my casual playthrough, I found Elden Ring to be extremely difficult, and there was a lot of the difficulty coming from the fact that you were being level-gated out of boss fights that were actually required. There were several instances where I got to a boss and I was simply too underleveled to fight them adequately. You can obviously just get good and learn to fight mechanically, but at some point you're going to be required to play perfectly for upwards of 5 minutes straight just for one fight. And that's not only extremely difficult, but ultimately slower than setting up some levels beforehand and fighting on a more even playing field. The game intends for this to be an incentive for exploring the open world, and in casual playthroughs it works great. But for a speedrun, having those levels without doing optional side quests was going to save a lot of time. What I did was I started a second playthrough and I tried to play the game casually, but this time just not do anything that I thought was optional. I did a purely sorcery build and let me tell you, if you don't route out your build perfectly, it becomes extremely punishing, leaving you underleveled for nearly every boss. I got to about Ranala before I decided to restart and route it even more meticulously. I started as Astrologer and I immediately went to Salid by using this chest to teleport. From here I could grab the Meteorite Staff and Rock Sling. This would carry me through the early game, absolutely destroying bosses along the way. The Staff has S tier scaling for intelligence and buffs gravity spells like Rock Sling. It was discovered that you can use bleed weapons to quickly kill the paralyzed dragon in Salid to get a nice 75,000 souls for basically free. Using these souls, I leveled up intelligence and absolutely stomped Margit and Godric. From there, I got the plus 8 rapier from this NPC and I used that to kill Ranala. It was found that there's an alternate path to the capital city using the side route with the magma worm. This seemed faster than grabbing the Dectus Medallion pieces, so I went that way and killed the optional boss. Once at the capital, this meteorite staff carried me past the next few bosses, but they were definitely getting a lot more tanky. This is when I got to the Fire Giant and I realized something. This was just not doing enough damage. It seemed that for whatever reason, I could just not get good damage from him or on the subsequent bosses, no matter what I did. I used Cheat Engine to test different builds and collect other staffs and spells. It actually turned out that the Glintstone Pebble spell that you start off with as Astrologer has the highest damage per second for the amount of magic of any spell in the whole game. And the single highest damage I could come up with would come from Rock Sling. Things only got worse when I would try to test damage values for the final couple of bosses. It turns out that Intelligence has a soft level cap at about 50 and another at 60 meaning all intelligence levels after 50 increase your damage by a decreased amount compared to the earlier levels, and even more so beyond 60. I found that the Lutz's staff can be found by beating the twin bosses in Salid was the best staff in the game, so I tried to route that into the playthrough. Double-fifting staffs and you could stack the buff from the less staff 
with the casting power of the right one. Meteor Staff and Lustus Staff at the same time, you can get the maximum amount of damage off, but it still sucked. Especially with such a long cast time and the possibility for it to miss, Sorcery just seemed like a non-viable option for late game. But as I learned from other people, apparently nearly everything sucks. The last six bosses in particular are really overtuned. Not that it's a bad thing per se, but for a speedrun, not being able to cheese or just over DPS the bosses was going to make the run a lot harder. And it does make some of the builds like Pure Sorcery nearly impossible without a ton of open world setup. It seemed no matter what build you would do, you aren't going to get the Dark Souls 1 level Dark Bead Everything to Death final boss rush that I was expecting. That's actually ideal though, I think, as those aren't as fun runs to watch or do, but it does make the routing of weapons and levels a lot more complicated. People tried Dex, Intelligence, Strength, and even Faith, but no one could really find anything that purely steamrolled the last few bosses. This is primarily because they just have so much health, and it seems no matter what build you do, you can't stack damage as much as you would need to effectively kill them super fast. This led to the discovery of two separate methods of dealing damage that are independent of level. As far as we know right now, it seems Frostbite and Bleed both do damage based on the percentage of the enemy's maximum health. This is how we killed the Paralysis Dragon, doing 5 damage per hit until Bleed buildup occurred, then doing massive damage for one hit. This can be applied to all of the bosses, making it so it practically doesn't matter what level you are, as long as you can proc the Bleed or Frostbite multiple times. The problem quickly arose, however, that the more you proc Frostbite or Bleed, the longer it takes for it to be ready to proc again. This quickly led to the conclusion that Bleed and Frostbite together would be the best possible combination. The Samurai class starts with the Uchi Katana, and that has Bleed, but it's only a 30 Bleed buildup. Once you beat Margit, you can get the Hook Claw, and that has a much better Bleed buildup. We found the best Frostbite weapon in the game in the form of the Art of War, Hoarfrost. This adds a stomp attack that sends a wave of ice at the enemy, costing mana. After about 3 hits, it would proc Frostbite. You can apply this to any weapon, and it scales with intelligence and weapon level. You can grab it from the invisible scarab near EG, the blacksmith. If you go underneath the bridge, you can fight a classic Dark Souls boss, Patches. Once you show no mercy and end his life, you can get his spear which is already at plus 8. Putting Hoarfrost on this spear absolutely demolishes Margit and allows you to yoink the claws. Patches also allows you to buy the golden claws that give you plus 30% more souls when you kill enemies, and a rune that stuns Margit. Using this rune, you can glitch out Margit and make him stand still for the whole fight. Grabbing upgrade materials from some caves nearby, we were able to upgrade the claws to plus 12 for Godric and absolutely demolish him. But in order to do this, we had to travel to Salid. The Ductus Medallion on this side of the map is right next to the dragon, and we use the claws to kill the dragon and then upgrade it with those souls. This setup took nearly 30 minutes, but the idea was that you did it at the start and you wouldn't have to do anything else for the rest of the run and could do good damage till the end of the game. From here, we teleported back to Godric, killed him, and then we just had to get one more demigod to progress. And the decision was basically just Ranella, since it was too slow to go to either Rikard or Radon having to use the lift first and then head to the boss. Renal is right there, and at least this was true until we discovered that you can actually fight Radon as soon as you want. Right below the dragon, the second half of the Dectus, you can jump off of the map and into the boss arena for Radon. This allows you to respawn at the checkpoint for the boss, skipping all of its requirements. He's still super hard, but since we already are right next to him and have an upgraded weapon, we fight him after Godric instead of Renala. This saves time because you don't have to explore an area at all, and you only have to fight one boss instead of two. From there, you would grab a few more upgrade materials and head into the capital and fight the first boss rush. At the time, we were primarily using the claws for damage, but before anyone could actually finish a run with this route, they quickly realized that it would do more damage if they just used Hoarfrost instead of the claws. The bleed damage was not nearly worth it compared to just doing the weapon art over and over again and you had to go out of your way to grab a ton more upgrade materials for the claws when you already had Patches of Spear at plus 8. 
The run was then rerouted to basically be the same exact thing, except you got to plus 25 with the spear without having to go out of your way for the upgrade materials to get the claws to plus eight first. And instead of going to fight Renala, you'd fight Radon, using the glitch to get into the fight early. The problem with this was that Radon was a really hard fight, even at this level, and getting late game upgrade materials would prove to be more difficult than initially anticipated. That didn't really matter though, because the amount of damage Warfrost would do in late game was not really comparable to anything else, because it scales primarily with the upgrade of the weapon it's attached to, you can pour most of your resources into upgrading that weapon, and pour the little tiny bit of souls you had left into Minded Vigor. This lets you do more attacks without having to re-up on magic, and take more hits without dying, both which are crucial for surviving the boss fights. To give some perspective on how long each of these routes were considered meta, when a game like this is routed, these ideas are usually only tested in-game once or twice. There is no time to actually attempt to run with it before obvious better iterations of the route come out. And in this case, usually one or two people would slow walk through the game with the route to test that it would work, and then immediately abandon ship onto the next one. At some point though, it comes pretty close and each new route is similar enough in time to the previous one that you can't just innately tell which is going to be faster. And this is when things start to get timed. One of those things that needed to be timed is this axe, Ice Rend. It's right near the college and is a somber weapon. Somber weapons only take one somber smithing stone per level to upgrade, as opposed to a regular weapon that uses 12 stones per level and levels 25 times, instead of only 10 for somber weapons. The thing about somber weapons is that you can't use an Ash of War on them. They all come with unique preset Ashes of War. Ice Rind, however, actually has Hoarfrost already on it. This means that by using this weapon instead of the spear, you can save a ton of time on collecting upgrade materials, reducing the amount of items needed to collect by a lot. The question is though, where do you get these resources? As it turns out, you can actually go down the elevator in the college and get eaten by a virgin maiden. This transports you to Mount Glamir and right by Godskin Noble and Ricard's boss fight. This area has a plus 5, plus 6, and plus 7 somber smithing stone and would allow you to traverse into the capital without collecting the Dectus. This is where the Ice Rind Rikard route was developed and it goes a little something like this. From the start, instead of going to grab the Dectus Medallion and fighting Marga and Godric with Patches of Spear, you book it immediately to the college and grab Ice Rind Hatchet and the Ajib Bonfire before heading inside. Then you head down to the Virgin Maiden and get kidnapped. Once in the lava area, you jump down to the right and collect the Somber Smithing Stones, and fight God's Kid Noble. This boss can actually be easily cheesed. If you stand far away from the boss wall as possible, you can enter into the fight and get stuck in the fog wall. This can actually make the boss's AI just not trigger at all. Once you wiggle free, you can use the Samurai class's katana to bleed and kill the boss for a clean 50,000 souls. From there, you can progress on to Rikard. In this fight, you use this scripted weapon to kill the boss and it does a ton of damage with crazy range. But it can actually be made even better if you fast travel to EG after picking up the weapon and upgrading it to plus 4 using somber smithing stones. This makes the fight way faster and much more consistent. If you level your mind to at least 25, you have just enough mana to be able to stun lock the second phase by repeating R2s. You can lock him in place by circling to the right until he is dead. So while the fight was hard, it didn't require any leveling or upgrading to do, and it counted as one of the two demigods that you needed to kill. He also gives you a ton of souls. You can immediately upgrade to plus 7 on the Ice Rain Axe and level many times, even more so than the dragon. There was one hitch though. The Rikard fight itself was very slow, nearly 3 minutes total. It took about a minute to kill the previous dragon, and in that amount of time you could arguably upgrade the axe with the souls from God's Get Noble and go fight Godric and Renala. The really unfortunate part about this whole ordeal though is that if you drop down to the right to go towards Rikard, you're locked out of the virgin fight that gets you to the capital, and you have to get captured twice to avoid this. This means that you have to spend an extra three and a half minutes backtracking to the same spot. A new item was routed in to account for this though. This twig allows you to keep your souls when you die, and if you don't get a bonfire after killing God's Kid Noble, you can keep his souls and end up back where you need to be to unlock the capital entrance. It was decided that it is faster to go from there and kill both Renala and Godric instead of Rikard and Renala. 
This saves time on the fight and the backtrack, removing the need to get captured twice. So to recap, we started by testing all sorts of builds, types, and damage. The bosses in late game are hyper overtuned, so most of the builds don't do that much damage. We decided to get around this by using damage types that deal a percent amount of the total health of the enemy. These two being Bleed and Frost. There wasn't a good method of doing bleed damage effectively, but we did find a way to do Frost with Hoarfrost. It scales with the weapon's upgrade level, and somber weapons are the easiest to upgrade. We found Ice Rend, which has Hoarfrost and somber upgrades. And from there, we decided which bosses we should kill to get there faster. In a very roundabout way, it turned out that the two bosses everyone did first were in fact the fastest, Renala and Godric, who both get annihilated by plus 7 Hoarfrost Stomp. This is all early game routing, but the early game is what sets up the route for the rest of the game. From here, it's a linear sequence of required bosses. We collect just enough somber stones to get the axe to plus 10, and put the rest of our levels into mind and vigor, so we can more easily survive and put out damage quickly. This isn't the only route being worked on though. People like Hazeblade have been working on testing a Sword of Night and Flame route, which seems to have a more high risk high reward strategy with a slower setup. Many more of these are sure to emerge, and one of the great things about Dark Souls speedruns is multiple routes can all be competitive and viable while they don't get their own categories. There's certainly still a competitive environment for each individual route, even if it isn't the fastest one for a given category. In Dark Souls 1 in particular, there are several routes that people like to run and compete in for any given category, and I expect to see something similar here. In a game as vast and complex as Elden Ring, the possibilities for routing are endless, and I have no doubt that over the next few years there will be countless reroutes and alternate changes that completely change the way the game is played. And I can't wait to see what the game truly has to offer. Before you click away, please consider subscribing. I'm super close to 100,000 subscribers and I'm gonna be making tons of Elden Ring content here in a minute. I'm also doing Elden Ring speedruns over on my Twitch. Link is in the description. Huge thank to all my patrons who support me, as well as the Speed Souls Discord and all of the people who have helped me route and help progress this game. It's been a super, super fun time, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.